Hey, welcome back to First Time Feast. I'm your host, Bobby Perko. We're bringing in the new year and everyone always thinks about new year, new me. So we're gonna do things a little bit healthier today. <clears throat> we're gonna show you some really, really good stuff. I'm gonna show you how to make your own chicken salad sandwich at home. It's one of those things that, you know, it's near and dear to the heart. It's really a delicious type food. You can go to Panera, you can go get yourself a, a chicken salad sandwich. But you know what? I'm gonna show you how I make mine. It's really, really tasty. Um, after that, I'm gonna show you <clears throat> how to, to change up your salad a little bit. Um, I personally love vinaigrettes. So um, not just like a simple vinaigrette. I'm gonna make a little bit of a, a fruity vinaigrette today. I'm gonna show you how to make your own strawberry vinaigrette with your own homemade croutons. So if you want, we'll, I'll show you how to do it. So first things first, guys, what we're gonna do, um, I'm gonna get started on, on working on this chicken. So um, everyone has a, a Costco membership nowadays and the, the best bang for your buck that you can get at Costco is their rotisserie chicken for five bucks. This thing is absolutely huge, but the problem with these rotisserie chickens, they're too big. Um, I know it's just me and the missus at the house, and whenever we buy one of these, there's always, there's always half a chicken left over. So one of the easiest things that I like to turn into is a chicken salad sandwich. So we're gonna start with breaking down this chicken, and we're gonna get, get, uh, get this thing rolling here. So we're gonna get our bowl set aside. We're gonna go, we're gonna go with the bigger bowl for this. We're gonna get our bowl set here. So we're gonna take just the breasts off this chicken today. And so this is just a leftover chicken. I bought this this weekend and that's absolutely perfect what it was to do for this. So you mean if you wanna make enchiladas, if you wanna make um, quesadillas, really, really simple. I'm just gonna go ahead and take the breast off and we're gonna turn this into some chicken salad. So let's go ahead and get both of these guys whacked off there real quick. And there's definitely a lot more meat <clears throat> on here that we can, we can get, but we're just gonna go with a smaller portion for right now. So we're gonna put this guy back, set that aside for later use. <clears throat> and then we're gonna start processing these down. So personally, I'm gonna take the skin off. We don't want the skin on here at all. We'll get rid of that, we'll chuck it. This other breast here, we're gonna take the skin off, we're gonna chuck it. And then we're gonna start working on this. I, you can shred it if you wanna shred it. That's perfectly fine. I kinda like the chunks. Um, so we're just gonna go about centimeter width, cut with the grain, and then we're gonna rotate this guy. And we're gonna cube it up and we're gonna go probably about, also about centimeter chunks. This is gonna give it a really nice texture, really nice bite. Um, it's gonna be the perfect, perfect amount in your, in. Uh, in each bite of sandwich. So we're gonna do the same thing for this other little breast. Let's chop them up real quick. Then we're gonna rotate it. Then we're gonna work on that. Super easy. We're gonna slide this back. We're just gonna put this right in the bowl here without dropping it all on the floor. Okay, so we got that ready to go. <coughs> Give our counter just a quick little wipe down. All that chicken fat, if you wanna save that, save all this carcass, you can make a really good chicken stock, make some really good soup. We're still in the middle of January, so the cold weather is not done. Don't throw away that uh, chicken carcass. Once you get all the meat picked off there, save it, boil it down in some water and a little bit of chicken stock, and you're gonna make yourself, you're gonna fortify that and make a really, really good chicken stock for some soup later on. So now what we're gonna do in our um, other little bowl here. We're gonna start working on the dressing, really. We're gonna, we're gonna get this a really, really good marinade and we're gonna make a really good sauce for this chicken salad. So um, the foundation of this, you can go Miracle Whip, you can go mayo, you can go really Miracle Whip and mayo. Um, I like it a little bit sweeter, to be completely honest with you. Um, and so for this, we don't have a ton of chicken that we're working with, so you're gonna kinda change your recipe to how much chicken you have. If you're doing this whole chicken, you're probably gonna wanna use close to a half a cup to maybe even three quarters of a cup. But we're doing this a little bit here, so we're probably gonna do a good spoonful, maybe a spoonful and a half. So put that in there. We'll start with that. Less is more. We can always add more to this if we need to add more to this. Then you're gonna wanna go to the store, get yourself a good quality mustard. I, I don't like that yellow mustard. I mean, I'll do it on hot dogs, but if we're talking about um, a nice a nice chicken salad, we're gonna change it up a little bit. So on this one, it's upside down. I got some craft beer mustard. This is uh, Mother Stewart's. It's a pretty good mustard. I usually do like a, a Creole mustard or like a Cajun mustard, uh, but we're gonna do a pretty heavy squirt of this. 
We're going to add that into there. So we're about uh, a quarter of the, the Miracle Whip that we put in there. So um, as for that acidity, I like a little bit of a bite. Um, the, the vinegar in the mustard is going to give you that, but I'll typically do like an apple cider vinegar, or for this case, since I have it on hand, we're going to do a little bit, just a little bit of this red wine vinegar. We don't need to go crazy with it, just a splash. Okay, we'll add that in there. And then as to start this off, we're going to go ahead and we're just going to give it a little bit of a, a little bit of a stir right now. Just kind of get that all mixed up. Make sure it's all even and it's consistent. Okay, so that's a good base. So now we're going to hit it with our seasoning. So um, a lot of people use tarragon. Um, I personally am not a huge fan of tarragon. Um, you can use marjoram, also not a huge fan of that. I really like dill, but I forgot to bring it, so that's okay. We don't need it. So we're going to do some garlic powder. Again, you can always do less is more. Start off with a little bit, taste it, see how it goes. And if you need to add more, you can add more. I got some paprika. Give it that flavor, give it a little bit of a pop. Um, we got some coarse black pepper. And then, oh, sorry, that first thing I actually put in there was onion powder. This is going to be our garlic powder. So onion powder and garlic powder. Okay, so now we got it all seasoned up here. We're gonna give it a little stir, mix it all up again. It's starting to look pretty good. All right, now let's just do something real quick. Let's just give it a tiny bit of a taste. Let's see how this goes. It's sweet. It's got all those good, like good uh, granulated uh, black pepper in there. It's got some good flavor. I don't really think it needs much else, to be honest. It's pretty good. So now that we got this all mixed up, what we're going to do, we're going to set these both aside. Set these aside for a minute. And we're going to start working on our vegetables. So um, since that was already pre-cooked chicken, uh, pre chicken, we don't really need to do much with sanitizing this. So um, I like to do a lot of, again, in this chicken salad sandwich. So you can really... Whatever you have on hand, this is kind of like a garbage garbage disposal meal. If you have grapes on hand, if you have celery, if you have pretty much any mixture of, of fruits or veggies, for the most part can go in there. Um, use your own discretion there, but this is kind of like a clear the sink, clear the fridge, um, clear the cabinet type meal. So I had some apples, so we're gonna go ahead and go, I'm gonna just do half of an apple to start. We're gonna go with half of an apple. Take that off, maybe we'll go with this half too. We'll save this for later. And then we're gonna get this guy cubed up just the same way we did the chicken. We're gonna cut it into kind of small little bite-sized pieces. Get this guy put back together real quick like a puzzle piece. And we're gonna work on it the other way real fast. We don't want big, big mouth pieces. We just want smaller, medium-sized little chunks. So apple, let's work on this little apple. We got our apple all processed and broken down. We'll toss this in, toss this into the pot here. All right, so we got that set aside. Now we're gonna work on our green onion. I love some green onion. Uh, as you've seen in my previous videos, if, uh, if I can make an excuse to put a green onion in there, I'm gonna make an excuse because I love me some green onion. So um, really for this, if you want to use the whites, you can use the white part of it. It's going to give it more of that oniony vibe. I already got some yellow onions here, so I'm going to really just focus on the green section, add that little bit of vibrance. So, but if you want to use the whole thing, you really can use the whole thing. It's entirely up to you. So we're going to go probably about a half a stock of green onion. Set that guy aside and we'll toss those in there. So these are going to be really good. And then why not work on our, our yellow onion? So we'll get this guy broken down, peel off the skin. This is a small little yellow onion. Um, I picked up the bag of these at Asian Market the other day. I mean, you can got a, you get a whole big bag of, of onions there for like dirt cheap. So um, shout out to Asian Market. You guys are great. Um, I just did a, a uh, um, anniversary dinner and I, I stopped and picked up some lobster tails so um, if you guys don't shop there go check it out it's a really good spot so this is a, these are small onions but again 
not a lot of chicken that we're working with, so we don't want to overpower it and all you get is onion, onion, onion. So use your own discretion. We're going with a half of a, half of a small onion. Same type of, uh, of cut here, guys. Nothing crazy. Just kind of get it broken down into small little, small little squares. Okay. We're gonna set these big chunks aside. We don't want anything big going into this. We'll break this up, spread that all around. Looking really nice. And then lastly, we're gonna hit this with some celery. So um, celery is not my favorite vegetable. Um, but it adds a really nice crunchy element to your dish. Um, really, really flavorful. Um, gets, gets like a, it's a unique texture. So when you bite into it, you know what you're, what you're working with. We're just going to do one celery stock. Honestly, just rip this apart and we're going to start working, working on this uh, celery stock here. <clears throat> I like to make them smaller chunks. A little bit goes a long way. So we'll take this on its back. We'll split it down the middle and then we'll start processing this guy down. Perfect. So that guy's all broken down. Add that on in. Cool. So that goes our veggies. That goes our chicken. We got it all incorporated. We'll give this a quick little stir real fast. And then we'll add in our uh, dressing. Any big chunks, use your hands, reach in there, break it up. Okay, so now we're gonna grab our, our seasoning, mix this in. It's looking a little bit on the light side. We're gonna probably need to add more mayo to it, which is really okay, but we'll see. How thin or how thick you want is entirely up to you. Um, this is actually gonna give it a really nice coating. I don't really like a, a chicken salad that's like sloppy. You bite into it and all the stuff drips off everywhere and it gets on your lap, gets on your plate. Um, this is pretty evenly coated. Um, I think we actually did okay with it. So that chicken salad is really much, pretty much ready to go. The last thing we're gonna do, we're just gonna hit it with a pinch of salt just for flavor, set that aside. Just give it one more mix. Okay, now this guy is really gonna be ready to go. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna work on our next couple of steps here. So we're working on our salad, but so the first thing that we're gonna need for our salad, we're gonna need to start with our croutons. So we're gonna set this guy aside. I'll set that up there for now. All right. So the best thing that I found for making a homemade crouton is get yourself a, a baguette. Um, this is a fresh baguette, but ideally let it sit out overnight. So you let it sit out, get, let it sit out overnight, it's going to get a little bit stale, which is perfect for this because we want to go for like a nice, crispy, delicious crouton. So um, what we're going to do, we're really only going to, we're not going to need a whole heck of a lot. We're going to take the end of this off. The rest of this we're going to actually use for our salad here in a little bit. So we'll just set this aside for just now. Uh, but this, this bread, what we're gonna do, we're just gonna divide it into fours, cut it right down the middle. And then we're gonna cut it right down the middle again. Okay, we got our bread chopped up and now we're gonna go into chunks. So we're gonna chunk this bread into crouton sized chunks. So the other night I wanted to change up some pace and. I, I didn't have any croutons, so I'm like, you know what? Let's just let's just make our own croutons real quick. So um, this was a first time for me the other day, and it it was really really enjoyable. I really liked how it came out, and it was just one of those things that you don't think about a homemade crouton. You always buy them from the store, but they're really really simple, really really simple to make. So um, I'm gonna give it just a little bit of a splash of some olive oil. Okay. Um, you can use melted butter if you have melted butter. Um, I'm going to use the rest of my garlic powder that I set aside from earlier. We're going to hit it with our black pepper. And we're going to go with our onion powder. And then the other thing we're going to do 
pick your favorite um, Italian dressing, whatever your favorite Italian dressing is. I just had some Olive Garden on hand. Give this a little bit of a shake and we're gonna kind of coat these guys just a little bit, a little bit in this dressing, okay? And you're gonna wanna get your hands kind of dirty here. So we're gonna go in and we're gonna toss this all around. We get this nice little toss, get everything as evenly, evenly coated as you possibly can. And that's gonna saturate into that bread. It's gonna get all that flavor in there. It's gonna make it really kind of nice. And real quick, before we finish that off, I'm gonna hit that with a little bit of salt. A little bit of salt. And we're gonna give this just a little bit more of a shake. Okay. And now, we're gonna transfer this to our baking sheet. We wanna evenly spread these out best we can. Put that all on our baking sheet, set that aside. And we're just gonna evenly set these, set these apart, okay? They're all good. We don't really want them touching if possible. We want them to bake and get nice and crispy. Um, now that those are good, we're gonna toss them in our oven. Um, if you have your, your conventional oven at home, um, I put these on for, I did it for 400 degrees and I watched them for about five minutes. You can check on them periodically, just like you're making garlic bread, really. Um, everyone's oven hook cooks a little bit hotter, um, but you know, just to see how it goes, um, you want a nice crackery, toasty um, texture. So we're gonna open that up and we're just gonna toss these guys in, just so I don't for completely forget about them. Let's use some modern technology and set a timer real fast. Hey Siri, set timer for five minutes. Okay, so now we got a timer running. When our timer goes off, we'll check our bread. We'll make sure that our, our croutons are good. So while those are baking, we're gonna finish up our last course here. So we got our salad. So like I said earlier, salad is one of those things that's kind of boring. Um, it's, it can be a really delicious thing, but um, it's, you, you get monotonous. You wanna change it up a little bit. So I'm gonna show you one of my favorite dressings. So if you have a dressing dish, if you have a little like a pinette or just uh, honestly just a, a measuring cup works completely fine for this. So we're gonna go kind of equal parts. We're gonna do some olive oil. We're gonna do it basically about a quarter cup. If you, if you want, depending again how much you're really gonna use. We're not really making a whole heck of a lot of this. So we're gonna go a quarter cup um, with our red wine vinegar. We're also gonna go about a quarter cup. So this should bring this up right up to about a half cup mark. Okay, perfect, we're right at a half cup. <clears throat> now we're gonna hit it with our um, aged balsamic vinegar. You really don't need a lot of this. I personally don't like the flavor, but it does add a nice element to it. So we're gonna go just a splash. If I was guessing, this is probably a tablespoon of balsamic, okay? Um, now the trick to this, or like the secret recipe, um, is gonna be, so get your favorite type of jam or jelly. Um, I personally like raspberry, um, but I didn't have it on hand. I did have me some strawberry on hand. So get your favorite type of raspberry vinaigrette or, or your jam or jelly, throw it in the microwave. So if you can see, we got this microwaved up. It's really like a, a liquidy texture, really good consistency. Um, this is probably three teaspoons um, of, of jam. So we're gonna put this in here. Okay, we got that in there, throw in our spoon, set this aside. Um, and then we're gonna add our distilled white vinegar. This is what gives it that bite, that sharpness. Um, I don't know if you ever eat at like Longhorn Steakhouse. They, has a ra they have a raspberry vinaigrette that is like so sharp that it almost hurts your mouth. I, I like it, but I, I think it's too much. They need to dial it back a little bit. So um, of this, you use the most, out of all of the ingredients listed, you use the most of this. We're gonna do about a half cup. Okay. So now the rest of our um, uh, seasonings that we had set aside from earlier, we're just gonna toss those in. We're gonna leave no stone unturned, finish up our garlic, finish up our onion powder. We're gonna go with our pepper. We're gonna go with our paprika. We're gonna toss that in there. And what I set aside for the end was our red chili flakes. We're gonna add our red chili flakes into there. 
and then we're gonna give this thing a good stir. We got everything all mixed up. Get that jam in there, get everything all mixed. Oops, splashing. We're probably gonna wanna taste this. We might need a little bit of salt. Season that up. Now we're gonna do a little taste test just to see what it needs. It's actually spot on. So it's got that nice, nice vinegar base, that sweetness of that strawberry jam cutting through. You got those red pepper flakes that adds that little bit of spice. Um, the only thing that would make this better is if you had some minced garlic. Add some big, big minced garlic cloves into there, <clears throat> toss that in. That's gonna make it really, really nice. So, so what we're gonna do, we're just gonna, we're just gonna check up on our bread. We're gonna see how it's going. So we're gonna pull this out. We're gonna touch it real quick. We're gonna see where we're at. It's getting close. A lot of it's actually getting pretty, pretty dark. So I'm gonna pull it out real quick and just kind of move it around a little bit. So we don't want this to burn. So we're gonna pull this out real fast. The back half is cooking a lot faster than the front half. So we're just gonna move some stuff real quick and we're gonna shuffle these around real fast on the tray. They're getting really close. We don't necessarily want them to burn. We just kind of want that crackery crispiness. They're just about done. So I'll put these lighter pieces towards the back and we'll put them in for another couple of seconds um, and then they should be ready to rock. We'll just keep an eye on that. That'll be just probably another minute, minute and a half and they'll be ready to go. Um, so let's do this. Let's finish up our salad. Our salad is looking pretty boring and basic right now. Let's change that up. Let's add some fresh, fresh apple slices to it. We want this to be a really yummy, good salad. So we're gonna add some apple chunks. Let's pretty this guy up. Hit it with some apple. We'll hit this with some really nice cucumber slices. I really like cucumber. Skin on, skin off, doesn't really matter. It's really healthy for you. It's a really, really good really good dish. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna cut these really thin. I don't really like a thick cucumber, so we're gonna go about four, four slices for our salad here. Pretty this thing up. And then we're gonna just finish it up with a little bit of onions. Same as before, we're gonna go really, really thin, really, really thin slices. And these are those really nice, sweet yellow onions. Um, we don't want to forget about our croutons. You know what? Let's pause on this real fast and let's check on these bad Larrys because they're looking, they're looking ready to go. Perfect. Set those aside. Croutons are good. And then we're going to go with our onions here. Our onions. Be a nice, tasty, fresh, healthy salad. And then we're gonna finish it, finish it off with some cashews. And then why not go with a little bit of Parmesan cheese? I grated some Parmesan earlier, brought that out here. This is gonna be great, guys. Okay, let's steal a couple of our croutons that we set aside from earlier. Oh yeah, how's that look? That's beautiful. And then let's finish it off with our raspberry. Awesome, 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 awesome. So now we got our salad done, our side dish is ready to go. And then as far as our, as far as our sandwich, we can't forget about our sandwich, man. So let's finish that up and let's plate this, plate this dinner. So, Again, if you're, making, if you're making some chicken salad sandwiches, croissants are really gonna be the way to go. Um, croissants are gonna be the way to go. I, uh, I didn't have any croissants, but you know what, my next best thing, we're gonna go with, some, with our, French, our French baguette here. So let's plate this up and let's uh, taste it out, taste it and see how she goes.
Oh yeah. That's looking really nice. Bread's done. So guys, this is just one of those really easy things that you can do at the house. Um, if you got your leftovers and you don't know what to do with them, just you know, make, a, make something new, try something out. So we got our chicken salad sandwich. Set this aside up front. And your homemade salad with a strawberry vinaigrette. So it's really, really healthy. It's really, really delicious. It's fresh. It's light. It's going to keep you going. You can eat this and, and not feel bad about it. And then you're really not going to um, put on the pounds. So thank you for watching. This was my episode of First Time Feast. Next time, we're going to do some uh, pan-seared steak with some pommes frites. See you next time.